Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. I've recently completed a manual swap in my E46 BMW that you see behind me, and I'm not exactly happy with the results. I mean, I, I am, don't get me wrong, it's really, really fast now, but the thing is it's a little bit too fast, it's a little bit too quick for me, and there's actually a difference, I think, between fast and quick. And what I mean by that is uh, the automatic differential is actually going to be that the gears in that are going to be much taller than the manual differential on these cars and what that means is that you're going to accelerate in each gear a lot quicker but for it also means that for any given speed that you're going down the road your engine is going to be traveling that much faster and the result of that is that you're going to wind out each gear in your manual transmission much quicker. So as I'm driving this thing around, you know, first is over really quick, second is over in like half a second. I'm shifting to third right away. I'm only going 30 miles an hour. Then I still have to shift in the fourth if I just want to kind of cruise around and not have the engine racing at like 3,500 RPMs. It's kind of silly. And I mean, don't even get me started on, on getting on the freeway, even in fifth gear, the things at 3,700 RPMs, just cruising at like 80 miles an hour or so, 75, 80. It's just silly, it's, it's geared so high. This thing is geared for drag racing at this point. It's not really geared for just driving around. You know, I mean, the, the top speed on it must be like 110 maybe with the engine racing probably at 6,000 RPMs or, or above 6,000 RPMs. I don't even know, I haven't tried, but that's, that's what it is, that's what's going on. So. What I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm gonna pop in the manual differential. I went and I got one from a junkyard. It was about a hundred bucks. And I'm just gonna swap them. I'm gonna put in the manual differential. That way this will be a true manual car and it'll be a little more enjoyable to kind of drive around. Anyway, let's get started. So the tools you're gonna need to do this job are an E12 socket, a 10, a 13, 17, 18, and 21 millimeter sockets. You're gonna need two screwdrivers. Any kind, doesn't matter. Uh, three inch extension, six inch extension, those are important. You need a ratchet, you need a 10, a 13, and a 21 millimeter wrench. This is a little pry bar for prying out the drive shaft. And then I found my favorite impact tools or electric tools, um, invaluable as always. This is the Milwaukee 3 8 inch uh, impact driver. And this is the 2457 3 8 inch electric ratchet. Love that thing. All right, guys, to give you some orientation, this is the front of the car, and that's the back of the car. Here's the differential that we need to get out. There are two drive shafts bolted to either side of it, so we're just going to need to unbolt the drive shafts. You can see there are basically six um, fasteners, three on this side, three around the other side. So six fasteners for each of the, the uh, axles. These aren't drive shafts, they're axles. <laughs> And uh, we'll need to get off the actual drive shaft, which is gonna be on the front right here. In order to get that off, we're gonna need to take this lower plate off out of the way. I'll show you some close-ups of that in a second. Um, the drive shaft, or the, the differential, is actually held in, there are two bolts. One coming from this way, another coming from that way, and then another side bolt right here. It's actually right here. So that's actually going into the side right here is where it bolts into so basically this is the this is the differential carrier that sticks out back here you know and it, it it's like the whole rear subframe so it's actually up here it kind of it goes up above the differential and there's a little arm that swings down right here and there is a there's basically a bushing a rubber bushing in there there are also those two rubber bushings up here where there, where those bolts go through now the bushing back here this actually has some problems with it. Over time, it's gonna crack and uh, it could need to be replaced and mine actually is cracked and I think it would be a good idea to replace it. Now this rear, this, this bar right here, this is actually the sway bar, the rear sway bar. And we're gonna need to detach it from its two mounting points right here and sort of swing it down just so that the, the differential is able to clear because it's gonna come down this way. It's gonna sort of tilt this way and come out. We're gonna need to actually lock these drive shafts in place so that they don't spin, so that when we, we actually crack these bolts loose, they don't spin when, they, when we crack the bolts loose. But also, um, well, okay, there are two ways to do that. Number one, you can go into the car, you can set the, uh, the emergency brake, kind of annoying. So the other trick we can do is we can remove the wheels and we can stick a screwdriver 
in between the brake rotor so that it hits up against the brake caliper, that'll stop it from moving as well. So I'll show you that trick. So here's the view from the opposite angle. So this way is the back of the car, that way is the front of the car. Now, uh, this is the bracket, the big bracket that we need to get off. There are gonna be two 13 millimeter bolts here, another two here that are covered by this sort of heat shield. That heat shield's held on with two 10 millimeter bolts on either side, here and here. And so that heat shield will come down, these bolts will come out, and then there are just gonna be two 18s here and here. We'll be able to get at that 18 in through the, um, through the exhaust right here. I got my 18 millimeter, I got my extension. I'm using three eighths inch sockets here. I don't think a half inch would work. So there's enough room to sort of get the socket in there and then slip it in like that. So we're good there. We really don't need to remove the exhaust. Once we get that bracket down, we'll have to disconnect the drive shaft. Now it looks like they gave you a little access panel right here in the heat shield to sort of get a tool in there and remove the drive shaft. So that should not be too big of a deal. So that screwdriver trick, like I said, you put a screwdriver in right there, and now when the wheel tries to turn, it's locked in place. So you do it that way on both sides, both from the top like that, and it locks things into place. And then you can get in here and crack these bolts free. I've got a little three inch extension, E12 socket, just right up through there. That's all we need to do. I already cracked this lower one here, so now, unfortunately, we're going to need to spin the drive shaft a little bit up a little bit. So it's just a matter of pulling out our screwdrivers, getting it spun a little bit and just repeating the process. I'm actually going to spin these out with my electric ratchet, though, while I'm here. Oh, maybe it was the other one. Yeah. You can leave that far one locked into place. You only need to unlock one side to spin things around. So just in case you haven't, uh, you haven't had your drive shaft out before for whatever reason, if you're doing this just to replace your bushing, let's say, um, you can't actually get the drive shaft out like this. You're gonna ha we would have to wait until we get this lower bar out because uh, that's going to actually reveal where the drive shaft sits into the differential and then you'll be able to sort of pry it out from there. So we can't get that out and don't worry yet. That's why we need to get this out. We need to get it out anyway. So we're just going to keep going. So we'll get the, uh, we'll get this heat shield out first. Again, it was the, it was just two 10 millimeters. You're only going to be able to see this one. And I'm going to use a, a ratcheting wrench to get at the other one. You could just use a regular wrench. I just happen to have this. Yeah. You probably don't even need that at all. Just, you know, get it loose with the regular wrench and probably get it out by hand. Uh, So now let's get out the 13s. And finally the 18s. Oh man, that extension's a little too long. Gotta crack that sucker first. Okay, so that's one, here's two. So this thing's not gonna fall on your head. This whole subframe is not gonna fall. Not to worry. We can actually get this out of here. I think just for safety, just for my own peace of mind, I'm gonna put at least one bolt back up here just to prevent that whole thing from falling. Just, you know, just in case. <laughs> All right, so we could take out the front two bolts now for the, the differential, but I think it might be a better idea to actually get the axles loose first. So let's do that and then we'll come back to these. So because the drive shaft is sort of angling down like this, it's, um, it's not possible to get the socket on these lower bolts straight. Actually, we can get it on this one. These should be pretty fairly short. Oh, actually these ones are longer than the differential that I took this off of. So I think these shafts are different, but my point was you can get the, uh, you can get the socket on higher 
it's easier to get it on these higher bolts. We just kind of do that same trick. We're gonna rotate the drive shaft around and lock it into place. Switch into my longer ratchet, regular manual ratchet here just to crack things loose. It's a little longer, get a little more torque. Reset the screwdriver. So as you can see, drive shaft's just loose right there. I can just sort of just sort of hang there. So this is what I meant when I said you really couldn't see anything. I mean, this exhaust just kind of blocks the whole shot, but you can still get up there with the same ratchet and a three inch extension, get up there, get on the bolts and kind of crack them free. The difference with this side is you got to switch the screwdriver to the opposite side because the differential or the whole axle is going to want to spin the other way as you're loosening it. So you got to slip the screwdriver in from the bottom instead of from the top. That's what I mean. You need to slip it in from the bottom because the thing wants to rotate this way and you need to stop it from rotating this way. Okay, I want to get this sway bar loose now. We've just got little uh, bolts going through this way with nuts on this end. They're 13 millimeter. So I'm going to hold with a wrench, I'm going to hold the nut on this end slip in behind here. Get that loose. Okay, so it just kind of hooks down on this end. So you just gotta sort of push up. Just kind of get it free. Okay, I think I'm gonna get this rear bolts out or loose first. Um, it's, it's 21 on both sides. There's a nut on the back, which we got to hold with a 21 mil wrench. Let's see if I can get the correct angle. We'll just do it that way. And I should be able to get this tool up over, which is nice. Okay. So that nut that nut is out. So I think I'm going to slip my transmission jack under here right now. And, uh, you know, once I kind of take up the tension, we'll, we'll pull the, the front two bolts out. And then uh, with the transmission jack, I'll be able to push up on the differential a little bit. And it'll just be easier to slip this rear bolt out of here. Because right now, the whole weight of it is pulling down on that bolt and kind of tweaking it. So without the jack, it's totally possible to do it without the jack. I'm just, I'm using the jack because I'm not trying to impress anybody here. I have it. Might as well use it. But you can just sort of you know, push up on it right here and then pull the bolt out in the back. No big deal. And you can just sort of muscle it down yourself, but I have the jack. I'm going to use it. Okay. I've got just enough upward tension on it that that bolt is loose and I can just pull it out just like that. So over here, something I forgot to do earlier was actually use pry bar to kind of pry the drive shaft out of this, uh, out of this holder here. And you just kind of do it like that. Spin that around. Okay, so that's loose right there. So these are 18s. And there, there are no nuts on the back. They just thread right into the differential, which is nice. So you heard it drop, differential drop just a little bit. So now the front is just sitting on this frame right here. So we got those two bolts out. Now it should just be a matter of lowering this differential out of here. So honestly, this jack might be more in the way than anything else really, because we have to sort of 
pivot the differential downward and um, the big thing is that just the back of it is going to be hitting against this little uh, against the the sway bar back here and if I'm remembering correctly I was able to in the junkyard I took this sway bar down but it was able to swing down over to here and that's because the exhaust wasn't there. Now I can't swing it down. It just hits up against the exhaust. So it's still kind of sort of in the way here. So I don't know. We're just gonna, just gonna see what we wanna do. Okay, I think I might want to pull the sway bar out completely. That might just be a little easier. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely in the way. So the sway bar is actually held in up here. There's a 13 here and then a 13 back over here, I guess where you guys can't see it, but I should be able to slip in from the side. I'll just get that. Oh, there's something on the top too. Oh man, there are nuts on the top. That sucks. So it looks like what I need to do is counter hold the bolts from the top and they're actually 17s up there and then unscrew the nuts from the bottom which are 13s so I'm not sure what you're gonna be able to see here um, I might be overcomplicating this a little I really don't know but this seems like the easiest thing to do I think the sway bar itself is kind of in the way or the axles in the way So now we just need to get this sway bar out from under here. What I should probably do is just leave this right here. Yeah, all right, well, I'll work around it. It's kind of in the way of the jack, but I'll just, I'll work around it. Okay, I did decide to just get the, the sway bar completely out and that way it was out of the way. And I've got the, got the bolt coming out here. So now this thing should be able to just drop straight down, come straight out. See, it's got to go at a little bit of an angle. So you still have to sort of help it, guide it. And as we're dropping it down, it wants to, it's going to want to drop a little too far back on my jack here. It's probably more difficult with this jack, if I'm being quite honest. Okay, here you can see that rear bushing, and you can see what I mean by it being cracked. It's cracked sort of over here in the bottom, and then cracked another little crack up here in the top. This is also a good time to sort of inspect your subframe your other subframe bushings the mountings of them this one this is the um the left rear one so there's the differential bush right there the left rear one this is the most problematic one uh this is the one that's going to tear out and it's not the bushing that tears it's actually the subframe where you know the actual body of the car gets torn out as you can see well first of all it starts with cracks but as you can see mine is you know really good i've inspected it you don't have to pull the differential out to inspect this by the way but i've you know i've inspected it before i've looked all around it there are no cracks on the body there's nothing you know there's nothing bad about it so i just wanted to show you guys that this is the one that is the most severe and then up here on the right front this is the other one that gets pretty bad. It's, it's much more difficult to see this one because the subframe is sort of hiding it. But, uh, you know, that's where you would inspect. You would just inspect the body up in there, see if you can see any cracks and whatnot. But I, I believe I'm all good. So this is my old differential that I just pulled out of the car. I cleaned it off. This is the new one that I'm putting in the car. Up on the label right here, you can see what the ratio is. This one says 3.38. That is the same for all automatics, basically. And the manuals, you're gonna find differential, you're gonna find different ones depending on which car you have. This one is actually a 293. That's what's supposed to be in a 330, which is what I have. Um, you can also find a 3.05. 
you can find a 3.15. Um, I listed all the ratios in an earlier video. I, I'll probably throw them up on the screen again. Um, so you just wanna make sure you're getting the right you know, differential for your application, or you can just get a, a taller set if you just want a little bit more of an aggressive setup. You know, uh, just, just uh, get what you can find, I suppose, or whatever. But one thing you need to be aware of is the fact that the input collars can be different. Um, this one actually has the cup style of drive shaft, so I needed the, the cup style of input collar, I guess, for lack of a better word. There is another kind where it's just flat across and the drive shaft is just sort of a, a normal sort of yoke style. And, you know, it's got the normal universal joint kind of thing and it just bolts on with uh, two bolts instead of the six that you have on here. So if you have that style, you want to be aware of that. It looks like you can actually change the, the um, you can change that input collar um, if you just take this nut out of here, it looks like the pinion would stay behind. You can just pull that off and put a new one on. You might need a puller to do that. I don't really know. But, you know, I don't have to do that because both of these are the same. That's nice. However, these output collars for the drive shaft are actually different. You notice this one has, has the bolt holes, like, close together right here instead of equidistantly spaced as this one does. So this is my old one, right? And the, this is actually smaller in diameter than this one is. So what we're going to have to do is pop these out and switch them over. The nice thing is they just kind of pop out. You just, you can hit them with a little pry bar action and with a hammer and they'll pop right out. What I don't know is, are they actually interchangeable? Is, are, are, is the splines on inside, are they the same? So we're gonna find out right here. But this is, you know, this is the procedure you would go through if you wanted to change your seals. You would just pop these out and then there's a little oil seal on the inside. You can just get that out with a screwdriver and, you know, hammer the new one in. Um, there should be a seal on the front of this one as well. So you would also change that. And then the other seal to be changed is the, the seal around the housing on the outside here. I'm not gonna change any seals though. Um, nothing is leaking. And I'm just, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, that kind of thing. So let's just see if we can get these popped out and switched over. All right, so let's just do one side at a time. Just get my pry bar in here. That's kind of all we need to do. Ooh, kind of bending that lip. I don't want to bend that lip. Mm-hmm. I don't like how I'm bending that lip there. That is disappointing to me. Probably better if I go over like that. Yeah, okay. Don't worry, I'll 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 unbend that. Not a big deal. Okay. So we've got that one out. So all I want to see is are those splines are they the same on the on the other one here? Okay, let me unbend this real quick. It's just a little dust seal, dust shield, really. Not a big deal. As long as it's not, you know, hitting on something, not touching something, should be fine. I think they are the same. They are definitely the same. So, Let's see if we can, here. Definitely the same. Okay, good, no big deal. So to change the seal, this is, this is the seal right inside of here. All you would do is just pop that out with a screwdriver and then just kind of install your new one in. Um, 
there's pro it's probably, you know, it's probably got a, a metal ring on the inside of here. It's probably rubber molded over a metal ring. So you should be fine sort of uh, banging the new one in. I would just, you know, just be careful. Get that new one in. You can see where it's supposed to be flush. This little lip on it is supposed to be flush with the outside of it. So that's all you got to do to change that over. But here, I'm just going to put this in. so that it's uh, sealed from the elements while it's sitting on my shelf. Let's be a little more forceful this time. Not too hard, I don't want it to go flying on the ground. New one goes there. This one goes here. So now this one is ready to go on the car. All right, let's get this new differential up in there. I did change the bushing just now. That'll be in uh, that'll be in the next video. I just decided to do that separately. So the thing with this is the um, the jack might actually get in my way a little bit. Let's just see. I don't know, or maybe it'll help me. But I just got to hold this up. Oh, what are we jacking against? Do one of those. Now the jack's definitely helping me. But you could use your floor jack for doing this. Hang on, I should have had I should have had the axle out of the way. I actually wired this axle up. Hold it up. No wait, stop. Yeah, that's that would be better. We just need to go like that. Let's get our bolts up into place. Oh, I think it's the side. It's not quite up into place. Oh yeah, okay, I see what's going on. We just need to lift it up a little bit in the front. Thought I had it in a second ago. I mean, I think it the bolt is slipped in a little, but what is the issue? I think it's the front is just kind of down at an angle. That's what it is. There we go. Yeah, we're, we're in. You can take this jack out of here. Let's just slip these bolts in. Slip this thing up into place. I'm just using my elbow to kind of press it up. There we go. And all right. Okay. Torque to spec. German spec, good and tight. All right, get our nut back on. All right, let's get this sway bar back up into place, which will probably be a little difficult because I don't remember how I got it out of here. Okay, I think we're, we're probably good, except this needs to go here. So we need it to go this way. It's just that simple. <laughs> if I just slip this axle out of the way, this should be able to go right back up into place where it's supposed to be.
I already did the other side. I forgot to film it. Okay, now we can get these bolts bolted back up. The rear of the subframe or the rear of the uh, sway bars here. So I'm just getting the uh, axles reattached, same as I got them off. It's kind of easier to slip the little this little uh, plate. Easier to sort of put that close to the axle first and then slip the bolts in. Okay. And I'm just using that same trick of using the screwdriver to kind of lock things in place and you know, just getting these on. So um, I'm just going to use that same, that same German spec, you know, good and tight. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've just found that this is not, this is not like a torque critical thing. Just, you know, make them tight. You don't, you don't really need a torque wrench for this. You just need some muscle. And just this time I'm, I'm slipping the screwdriver in from underneath because I need to stop the axle from rotating the other way. So that's all it is. Just a matter of doing that and uh, readjusting things. Anyway, I won't bore you with all the details of this. I'm just going to get this axle in. Then I'll get the other axle in. Then we'll do the drive shaft. Okay, so I've got both of the axles bolted up, tightened up. I'm just getting this drive shaft into place. Okay, looks like I've got my screwdrivers on the wrong sides. I probably need to go opposite. Oh, actually, this screwdriver fell out. Yeah, so on the uh on the passenger on the on the right side of the car i've got the screwdriver on the bottom on the left side of the car i've got the screwdriver on the top so it's basically just opposite um so we're just going to get these in uh these collars don't mix these up they're different for the drive shafts than they are for i mean they're different for the axles than they are for this drive shaft here but i believe all these bolts are the same at least they are for me <clears throat> again if you have those different types of drive shafts or axles Things are going to be a little different. Okay, let's see. I think I can just pull one out. Yeah. Let's pull the one screwdriver out. Now you want to be careful when you're bolting these back up, when you're just doing anything with these e-torx bolts. Uh, if, you're, if your socket is not all the way seated on the e-torx bolt, you will strip that sucker right out. So you don't, you don't want to be this much on. You want to make sure you're fully seated every time. So now let's just get this mount back on. So we want to leave this, these sides loose. We want to get the 13s in first before we go ahead and tighten everything up. See, don't even make that one too tight yet. This, this might even be a little too tight. Okay. Okay, those are tight. Now we just have this little heat shield. Let's see, how did that go back in this way, probably. Okay. Well, that's it. No more bolts left. So I just got back from a test drive and it is so much better now. I, I, I prefer it this way so much more. It's finally like easy to drive and enjoyable to drive. Before it was like, with those super tall gears, the gas pedal was 
was was so sensitive with those because you know even the slightest bit of gas you had you know equaled like monster torque when you're starting out in first gear so it was either you know there were two modes when, whenever i would try to start in first gear it was either rocket the thing forward or you know i wasn't giving it enough gas to the point when it would start like giddy upping you know because i wasn't quite getting the that sweet spot there but now it's perfect now it's you know it's enjoyable to drive again honestly i didn't I didn't want to drive my car before with those super tall gears in there. It just was so much work. It was, it was you know, I could never drive the, or shift the thing smoothly. It was just like, it was, I wasn't happy. <laughs> I really wasn't happy. I was honestly contemplating putting the automatic back in there. That's how unhappy I was with it. But now after this test drive, it's so much better and so much nicer. I think I'll keep it around for a little while longer, I think. Um, anyway, you know, you, you don't have to put in the 293 gears. If you find like the 305 gears, that probably will be really nice. You'll get a little bit of, you know, a little bit of best of both worlds maybe. You can even find the 315. The, the 325s have the 315, so that's probably very, very easy to find if you're getting it from a junkyard, you know. If you're getting it from eBay, different story. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks for watching.